Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. Army officers say the missile found... Driving down a dark rural road in the middle of the night, your imagination is bound to get a little wild. Spotting eyes in the bushes, conjuring figures in the shadows between trees, or even feeling like you're being watched are all understandable reactions to a spooky atmosphere. But what happens when an overactive imagination isn't enough to explain the bizarre creature staring out at you from the dark? The town of Dover, Massachusetts is a relatively quiet and peaceful community. But for one week in 1977, a rash of unusual creature sightings sent the local area into a flurry of confusion and curiosity. Was there a demon in their midst? The first sighting occurred on April 21, 1977 by three 17-year-old boys who were driving through the Massachusetts area when the car's headlights illuminated it. Bill Bartlett, the driver, reported that he saw what he thought at first was a dog or a cat, but upon closer inspection, realized that it was a bizarre, unearthly-looking creature crawling along a stone wall on Farm Street. Bartlett continued to watch the creature, and he reported it to have a disproportionately large watermelon-shaped head and illuminated orange eyes like glass marbles. It had long, thin arms and legs with slender fingers, which it used to grasp onto the pavement. It was hairless and had rough, flesh-toned skin described as tan or sandpaper-like. The creature's appearance was very plain with no nose or ears, and no mouth was seen. The witness drawings portray its head as having a skull shape, forming the contour of a circle on top with a more elliptical ending projecting down to include where the nose and mouth would be. The Dover demon was also thought to become invisible or translucent in the night. By day, it hid deep in the forests of Dover, Massachusetts. Other witnesses have claimed the creature had green eyes and seemingly smooth, chalky, gray-toned skin, three feet tall, and made a blood-curdling noise similar to a hawk screech combined with a snake's hiss. But all witnesses say it had no ears, no mouth, nose, or known gender. Witnesses also agree that it stalks in the trees and waits to scare its next victim. The creature was sighted again an hour later by John Baxter, 15, and Pete Mitchell, 13, as they were walking home. He said it was bipedal and ended up running into a gully and standing next to a tree. The next day, Abby Brabham, 15, and Will Trainter, 18, claimed to have seen a similar-looking creature from Trainter's car on the side of the road. Brabham's description matched Bartlett's and Baxter's descriptions, except this time, the cryptid had illuminated green eyes. She approximated its height as about the size of a goat. Investigators attempted to shake up Mrs. Brabham by noting she said it had green eyes reflected by car headlights, while Bartlett mentioned orange eyes being reflected back to him by his automobile's lights. Nonetheless, Miss Brabham was steadfast in her description. Bartlett, Baxter, Brabham, and Trainter all drew sketches of the monstrous sight shortly after their sightings. On the piece of paper that includes Bartlett's sketch, he wrote, quote, I, Bill Bartlett, swear on a stack of Bibles that I saw this creature. By this time, the story had attracted national attention. Many people wrote the whole thing off as a coordinated hoax. But there was no indication at the time that any of the witnesses knew what the others were reporting. Another somewhat unusual theory is that the sightings were actually of a young moose calf, which would have a similar gangly appearance and large eyes. However, there were actually no wild moose in Massachusetts at the time. William Bartlett gave an interview to the Boston Globe in 2006, reaffirming the veracity of at least his bizarre sighting. Since that week in 1977, others have also reported encounters with the Dover Demon. 
But what was it? An extraterrestrial interloper? A bizarre denizen from another dimension? Or the product of some weird, aberrant science experiment? I believe that the witnesses saw exactly what they reported seeing. As for the rest, we may never know. Thank you for listening to the Shadowland Radio Show. If you're listening on the Blackwater Media YouTube channel, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. You can also listen at blackwatermedia.net and the Blackwater Media Facebook page. I'm Dr. William Lester, and I promise to see each and every one of you again on the flip side.